Welcome, Marvelous Makers and Art Appreciators to the Art Space Podcast, brought to you by Levin Street Gallery and Art Space, located at 4601 Sheridan Road. Pop on into your favorite citrus-themed art gallery. Yes. And check out the Clay Studio. Oh, we are we are in the Clay Studio today. We're it's there. Weird, wild, and wacky day. We're in it. <laughs> and I am your host, Shelby Nesmith. And I'm Jake Hoy. And today we are here with the, I don't even know how to describe you, girl, because I am just obsessed with your work. Um, we have the prolific um, <laughs> Carly Lyons with us today. Hello. Thank you for having me. Yay, yes. she's here. <laughs> I'm here. We got her, we got her. Long time <laughs> listeners will know that Shel uh, Shelby, Carly is our, I've been debating on whether or not I, I can call you this because I don't know if people will get the Moby Dick reference, but you are our white whale. That's we have, crazy. We have been That's trying crazy. to get you on and, and hoping to get you on for months at this point. So Yeah, and I, I mean, I'm happy to be here. Yes. I was kind of bouncing around for a bit mm -hmm. in the summer. Um, you had a busy summer and a lot going on. Yeah, I did. So, so, I mean, I'm happy to be here and have the time to talk with you guys. Yes, Pleasure definitely. Is all ours. You, you took a little retreat and kind of spent some time with your art, and you're like, I'm ready. I'm ready. I am yes. ready. You can hear it in your voice. <laughs> yeah, very calm, serene. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm over here sounding uptight and... Uh, Mr. Like, toothache. Yeah, toothache. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> Found out today that I have to have a root canal. Ooh. Uh, so, uh, yeah, no, not fun. <laughs> It'll be over before you know it. Yeah, <laughs> probably. No, not by the time this episode comes out, but uh, <laughs> shortly thereafter. Well, hopefully that won't impede your Thanksgiving that has passed. It ha It did not. Okay, cool. Let's be positive about <laughs> maybe, this. Maybe yeah. Christmas. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Either way. Um, so, of course, we know, well, I know, Jake knows a lot about your art, too. I do. So we're probably just going to um, gush about your artwork yeah. for a little Let bit. Let the gushing yeah. commence. <laughs> um, so just as like a brief question, um, how would you personally describe your artwork? Oh, man. I know it's not a question on here, but... I'm curious how you talk about it. Um, I guess like a, a simple way to explain it would be actually my website and like my brand is um, called Earthly Connection. Okay. So I kind of think of it as connecting with this earth, using okay. materials from the earth, and then me being a person of the earth, like bringing these things together. And there you go. Oh, well, awesome. Yeah. Love it. Thanks. Combining like human elements too. So yeah, being part of the earth. So that makes so much sense. And so would you describe your art as earthly? Would that be a good adjective? <laughs> I believe yeah. so. Yeah. Is yeah. that an adjective? I don't know. <laughs> Second episode in a row that I question my grammar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good, a good word to describe it. Just mm. connection with nature. Nice. Um, I always go for surrealism as my describing. Yeah. Because you like to break the boundaries sometimes of what you expect to see in certain places or mm -hmm. situations that you've set up. So I really like it. Um, I definitely yeah. described you today to like one of my coworkers who was always like, who well, you got on the podcast tonight? I was like, Carly. And, and it's pottery, but not like you would expect. Right. A little like, weird. Yes. A little you got to do this stuff. Like, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> Get on the internet and look it up now. Yes. Quickly. Because <laughs> that, will, that will color how you listen to the rest of this episode. Yes, definitely. And um, not all your pieces are functional, which I think that's a cool thing that you explore. Um, yeah. Um, I think as a potter, like calling yourself a potter, people assume it's like cups and bowls and right. mugs and when I first started my journey, I was doing a lot of that because I'm like, what else do I make with yeah. this? And I didn't have a lot of sculptors in the area to like look up to and be like, oh, wow, like this is possible. I can do this. So I kind of gravitated towards that at first. Um, but then like playing with clay and making these odd shapes or sculpting animals or plants like that is where I was like, whoa, this is fun. Um, I've kind of reached that flow state of consciousness where like time disappears. Like that is what happens when I like sculpt. Mm -hmm. um, so that is something I'm trying to balance, but I'm sure you've noticed like I'm leaning more towards sculpture mm -hmm. lately. Yeah. 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 You've been exploring that. Um, a lot more wall pieces, which I like to see those and yeah. explore the 2D kind of space, but not 
exactly 2D. So, yeah. Definitely. Right. Like, I feel, you know, being pulled sometimes in, like, two different directions. <laughs> but really, it's just a very delicate, like, dance, you yeah. know, I'm trying to do between the two. Oh, awesome. Yeah. One of the images, we, we have our cheat sheets in front of us. And one of them mm-hmm. I stole from a, a video on your uh, your Facebook recently. Yes. And it's it's got the, the, the woman's face uh, with, like, a crown of leaves, maybe, and then mm-hmm. a bear. Yes. And that just blew my mind when I saw it. Um, that piece, I mean, it was it's a pretty special piece to me. Um, I recently was in the Blue Ridge Mountains, um, and I spent two weeks, like, in solitude, like, alone, mm-hmm. like, in the mountains. And there were some black bears hanging out with me. Um, bear okay. country. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and you're alive. Bear country. <laughs> I made it alive. Um, but just to sit there and be with them was, I mean, it was magical. Um, and I was on, um, like native land. So like the form that kind of came out of that moment looks very native American. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I sculpt these faces and I'm like, who are you? Like, where did you come from? You know? And I think it's just the land, like being there. And it was, you know, one of those Mm life-changing moments. Connection moments of, yeah. Oh, well, I love that. I'm mm-hmm. glad you got an opportunity to do that because not everyone gets that moment and chance to slow down and check in with themselves. So right. it's very much needed. Right. For sure. Okay. Yeah. Gushing uh, yeah. oh, <laughs> momentarily <laughs> over. We're going to pause. <laughs> going to get gonna... into our questions. Yes. We're going to get into these questions here. Um, so what got you into art? Uh, I mean, uh, it, Going as far back as I can remember, um, I think I've always been into it. Um, Mm -hmm. Like I memories when I was young, like I drew a lot, like sketched a lot, like um, so I think it was a safe kind of space for me, like being in the sketchbook and like growing up my childhood. I mean, like most most humans on Earth, um, it was kind of rocky, lots of trauma. Um, so I think art was my way of healing and I guess kind of escaping my reality. Like as a young child, having a parent who was incarcerated, having mm-hmm. a parent who died when I was young, you know, it. when you're young, you don't know how to process those emotions. So I think, you know, I took the pen to paper and I kind of was able to let go of a lot of the problems that a young child shouldn't have to face, you know. Mm-hmm. So I think healing therapy you know is what got me into it and then i just kept on with that momentum you know so powerful (laughs) yes that's powerful um and having a sense of control too um being able to kind of take the world around you and um process things so that we're as you probably know because i know you're an avid listener <laughs> um we are well, maybe not avid. well i think oversell. every episode no, oh, okay episode. you qualify as avid <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know she's a fan um <laughs> but um we're big on art therapy and just how art connects with mental health and the importance yes. of exercising that and expressing yourself through that so i'm glad that you had that tool to help you and move along because yeah. I, I understand that being human, there is uh, traumas that come along and art is a magical thing that you can process. It so. is. And mm-hmm. I mean, art therapy is very real. I've seen it. I've experienced it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's it's real. It's big. <laughs> it's important. So. And great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> art. Yay. <laughs> I am pro art therapy. Oh, I have good. decided. Uh, <laughs> I don't think anyone was really on the fence about that. (laughs) Just want to be clear. (laughs) Clear statement. We are pro art therapy on this podcast. (laughs) Well, uh, that fits well into our next question. Uh, What is your earliest art memory? Now, it could be something you made yourself or, you know, experiencing art. What do you think? I think, you know, 2D wise, as young as I can remember, Mm -hmm. Um, but pottery wise, um, I think I was like, 10 or 11 uh, my mom took like a pottery class with one of her friends I think it was at the Wista Museum and we're seeing but very similar to like what goes on at Lemon Street mm-hmm. and she brought home a little bit of clay and I sculpted this little turtle Aww. and I just like why I don't know like I didn't I wasn't I didn't wasn't into turtles I didn't have a turtle 
Um, but that was my, yeah, my first clay experience. Um, didn't touch it, you know, until like years later in school. Yeah, I think I was like 10 or 11. So you, oh, cool. you weren't a turtle girl. It I was, wasn't a turtle girl. Like I could no. see like, you know, oh, everything turtles all, all the time. No. Just random turtle out of just nowhere. Just a random turtle Left field turtle. Yep. <laughs> um, I notice uh, teaching classes and stuff, kids usually gravitate towards either turtles or um, flowers and... Um, trying to think what other uh or cats those are like oh, usually the three yeah. main things they jump towards and i don't know where does the turtle come from i, I don't know. know why i don't if, if it starts with them just kind of making like a little bowl in their hand then like oh it's a shell and it yeah. goes from there yep it is a unique animal like it is. very few animals have their own house yeah like um, built yeah. in <laughs> and a very ancient <laughs> yes. animal right We've yeah. Been here oh for yeah a while, you know truly the rv of animals <laughs> <laughs> All I'm thinking about is the kid, the turtle kid. You know the the video. I like turtles. I like turtles. <laughs> I, I, but yeah, those are like the top three. When I've been teaching classes, like kids usually gravitate towards those for hand building. So interesting. I don't know if it's like oh, it's familiar and quick, and there's well, cat parts. I get. You know, because a lot of people have, have cats. Yeah. Flower I get, you see flowers everywhere. Yeah, like turtle. Right. I mean, some people have turtles, but it's not like the most common pet. Yeah. And I've even taught adult hand building classes. There's at least one turtle in there. I <laughs> Oh, and frogs. That's another one too. I'm like, where the cousin I... of the turtle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, those are like I think the main four things. There's at least one in every class. Like, oh cool, there's the turtle. Or nice. there's I've... the cat. I was a turtle <laughs> so, kid. Yeah. yeah. Well, awesome. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us for Turtle Talk. Yeah. <laughs> That's just a weird thing I noticed <laughs> when teaching. So moving on um, <laughs> back into the clay talk. Um, so who or what uh, is an influence on your art? And I know we kind of touched on it with nature and... Yeah, I don't know if it's a who, but a I guess who in a general sense of like Mother Earth mm -hmm. um, has been my main influence and like kind of touching back on like art, art therapy, um, you know, when life gets hectic or I'm feeling a little disconnected, um, spending time in nature, right, mm -hmm. is like my way to reconnect and kind of recenter myself. And, you know, I look around the world and society and like you know you can see the darkness and there are lots of problems and i think if more people understood like this is this one thing that connects all of us mm -hmm. you know so i think that truly is what motivates you know me and like the work that i make is if i could it's a common ground for everybody yeah. art but also like this earth yeah it's oh. all of all our home you universal know? we all mm -hmm. experience earth so you know mm -hmm. yep we should care about it. it should bring us together yeah yeah through the universal language of art so yeah. it's just right you cannot misinterpret this <laughs> right yeah and i think you know when i was younger too i thought it was the coolest thing we're like thinking I could go to China and I could draw a picture of a dog mm -hmm. and they would know, like yeah. they would look at the picture and be like, yes, we know what that mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, it is universal. It is timeless. Like it's, I just, I love it. Yeah. Gushing I'm, over the earth here. I'm a hundred percent on the same page. Yes. Like if I can get a little personal go for a second, I about, Oh man, like seven years ago at this point now, I, I took a big road trip on, by myself 16 days drove 6,000 miles uh, all over the west everything west every state west of the mississippi and i went to a bunch of national parks and it was totally transformative for me like right. i still look back at that time and like it's like the before and after right and and yeah i'm not kidding no. i'm getting a little sentimental but yeah. yeah so the 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 connection yeah it's it's hard to put into words right really. it, it is and I if think... you know it you know it right and i think for me, like making these pieces that like are inspired by the earth, it's kind of my way where, you know, if you look at like world leaders and politicians, like I think if they were more connected with the earth and mm -hmm. themselves, you know, the, the world might be a little bit of a better place. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. So I think that's a big kind of motivation for me and what moves me um, 
It's my muse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you've made some pieces kind of um, talking about climate change or um, connecting with Earth. I know you've, um, it's not on our cheat sheet here, but you mm -hmm. have like a um, half of the world and like a person sitting on it, basically giving it a hug mm -hmm. and just comforting the earth and i love the that imagery that you create as um you're not only saying thank you but help at the same right, time right like i feel your sorrow with you mm -hmm. and i mean growing up like i grew up in the 90s and mm -hmm. everything was perfect in the world i didn't grow up listen like learning about global warming mm -hmm. and people didn't speak about environmental issues in school so like mm -hmm. as i got older i was like wait what <laughs> what is that like uh oh <laughs> yeah we gotta do something but me as just one person you know like i go up i, I pick up trash like you know we mm -hmm. do what we can we recycle but right. in the grand you know the picture it's sometimes it can be taunting and intimidating to be like wow like how can i help and i think if i made a piece of pottery that reminds someone that they mm -hmm. are connected to the earth it might change them in a way and i think that was um it's big for me i mean still through all of these years i've been creating it is what i've been doing is our, like the earth is the center like focal point awesome and you've been succeeding at that. yeah it's trying <laughs> and i think that's why your art is also very impactful because universal language of um art and then coupling that with again our shared um, experience with earth so i feel like that's what um makes your work impactful as well as your technique and everything like that so um when did you start incorporating um gems and fossils into your work is there kind of like a timeline for that because it's been recent like i'd say the past two years two? Okay. um and i think doing that is kind of honoring my inner child um, when I was young, you know, hanging out at Lake Michigan, you know, my mom would tell me stories, my pants would be falling down because they were like shoved with rocks yeah. in my pockets and I'm collecting, you know, driftwood and like these little fossils. And yeah. that's something I've revisited in my adult years. Like in the summer, I live so close to the beach, I'd go and pick up pieces of fossilized coral and driftwood. And I think kind of touches on my brand, like the earthly connection, like I'm taking these things from the earth and I'm reconnecting it into my art. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of a new thing stemmed from play. Oh, definitely. You know, where I like I'm at the beach picking up coral and I'm like, I'm working right now, yeah. right? <laughs> I'm working. Taking a moment to uh, reconnect, but also work at yes. the same time. <laughs> That's what I tell myself. <laughs> That's the same thing I do when I watch a storm coming in. I'm like, no, I'm not just enjoying this. This is also right. research. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you can enjoy those things. You Kill can two enjoy birds working. with one stone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and then I a uh, question I get a lot while um, working here. How do you go about the process of putting the stones in or the fossils in? Um, I usually tell people uh, you like dry fit it. I guess is the only way. Yes. It, so. Yeah. And like, because if anybody knew anything about clay, which if you do it or teach it, you probably don't, but clay shrinks a lot as it dries and also shrinks in the kiln. So to dry fit it, yeah, is like to put it in there and then make sure there's extra space. And then as it's drying, kind of refit it and recheck it. Like it's actually quite time consuming. Mm -hmm. um, I just love it and i love the look of it and i love stones and fossils and crystals so like i just want them around me yeah, so time. <laughs> it's worth the effort yes worth yes. the effort yeah <laughs> well awesome i'm glad i'm telling people the right you thing because i've are. never done that process in clay before so yeah a lot of people yeah. assume it's fired into it yeah i guess i kind of thought that yeah so. which i think you know it gets up to like 1800 degrees yeah, probably not yeah. good for these <laughs> delicate fossils right and, stuff. <laughs> and a lot of people assume like wood mm -hmm. is like fired in it no i wish i, I fire attach bad. that later yes. <laughs> fire burn wood yeah right <laughs> all right well uh let's move on to our next question who are some of your favorite artists and that would include local artists and uh, yeah, about all of the above. Oh, I don't know. I mean, right? Like that's such a hard question. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, to me, it's like picking a favorite flower. Like I just, <laughs> yeah. I love them all. There's a place for them everywhere. Luckily, um, you can pick more than one. This is, <laughs> right? You can pick a bouquet of your favorites. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know if I'll say favorite, but my most influential artist right mm-hmm. now um, is an artist. His name is Taki Runa, and he's a potter out of Peru. Mm. And he's doing, um, he makes ancestral pottery. So he does a lot of singing water bowls and flutes and whistles. And I mean, it has been very inspirational to me. Um, the The line that I'm working on now for my website is actually um, pieces for ceremonies and rituals. Oh. Um, I've been making whistles. I think bringing that play and the movement and sound like into these pieces is just magical. And I love it. And It's like ceremony and ritual, something that I'm trying to bring more into my life. Mm -hmm. And I think, especially as Americans, we are a little disconnected from culture and we Mm -hmm. don't have a lot, or at least I growing up didn't have a lot of these things. And Mm -hmm. I think the world could use more of it. Um, So he has been um, just a blessing to come across. I think I found him like on the internet, Um, but we have briefly talked Mm. And he, you know, I had to use like Google Translate because oh, I didn't sure. speak Spanish very well. Um, but he was like, come to Peru. Like, you don't need to speak English to make pottery. And I'm like, right. And I hope someday to like make it there. Oh, yeah. well, awesome. Um, yeah, I think right now he's probably my favorite artist. Now, what is a singing water bowl? <laughs> um, so it's actually, usually we'll have two two sections to it. And when you fill it with water and you move it back and forth, it actually makes a singing noise. Oh, Google man. it. They're I'm, super cool. I'm looking this up as soon as I get home. <laughs> yeah, really, really cool. I was picturing like, you know, you do your finger on the rim of oh. a glass or something. <laughs> and it, it, Well, singing will are a thing, mm-hmm. um, but uh-huh. adding like the water into it is makes it, I think, more of like a ritual okay. ceremony. I got it written down. I'm checking so that you, out. You know those little things as a kid, you'd flip it over and make like a weird like moo noise. <laughs> it's like that, but... Yes, made from the earth and water, right? But <laughs> I, I used yeah. to have a stick that it would. You, it was supposed to sound like rain. Yeah, you, rain you, stick. Yeah, yeah, I definitely got that at like Rainforest Cafe. Definitely. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, like some of the um, ceremonial bowls that I'm I've been working on. Um, they have like a a pedestal to them, which is important because if you're burning something in the bowl, mm-hmm. it gets hot. True. Yeah. But this way, you know it's cool near the bottom and you can pass it and share it so it's more of like a communal um thing so that's been fun and i i have a feeling that it'll be my thing for a while yeah i saw your posting today of um that taller one and like um the little kind of additives that you've been exploring too yeah with the nichrome wire i I'm really enjoying that. That yeah. is really cool. And that's like a, a part of it, like mm-hmm. having this piece that also makes sound. Mm-hmm. Like, how cool. Yeah, I love yeah. it. So really interesting stuff that you've been <laughs> dipping into. So mm-hmm. I'm always excited for what you're doing. <laughs> I know I met one of the uh, board members, uh, Beth introduced me to him and he was like, I love your work. It's just so, and he did this like whimsical <laughs> hand gesture and I'm like all over the place. Yes. I think I know which board member. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, we're all chuckling to ourselves. Yes, because yes. um, yeah, we know who we're talking about. <laughs> I hope I they're it. listening. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that is a good way to capture the energy like because there's an energy too so it's just like i don't know a gesture yeah like and it's hard for me to stay like on brand in quotes because like me as a human like i'm constantly evolving and changing like it's hard for me to be doing the same thing like over and over again so my work Mm -hmm. is constantly changing and right. as i change my work changes along with it do you ever get people coming up to you going i want one of those like a, something you made like two years ago and you're like no <laughs> sorry don't do that no more yeah it's i mean and i think growing throughout this process i mean having boundaries mm-hmm. is like very important as an artist oh, yeah. um because you know like your time is the most valuable thing um so i think saying no has been 
uh, enjoyable as of late. <laughs> oh, good. It is really hard. Just um, like I'll commission you this. It's like uh, yeah, I'm kind of in my own lane right here. So yeah, and I and I I'm and okay. I am open to commissions, obviously, mm-hmm. but it typically I want it to be something that resonates with me, right. my, what I'm doing currently, and I think you know money. It's a lot of stuff attached to it, and mm-hmm. it, to me, it's kind of this energetic contract you know and it's like okay. i've gotten commissions from people and oh they think because you know i'm paying you they just have access to you and they can tell right. you what to do and i'm just like oh this is weird this isn't <laughs> no, rent a carly no. yeah no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> oh gosh but well it's good to know that you're available if the energy uh feels connects. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you have a connection with the energy um, so it's good. I'm glad that's something we haven't talked about on the podcast is having boundaries as an artist. It's so important it and, is. Um, for you to be able to just say, no, this isn't really for me. That's huge. It took years. <laughs> took years. It's still when it rolls off the tongue, it's still like, ow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. um, but I think when I first started, so I've actually only been doing art full time um, only three years Mm -hmm. since the pandemic started. Um, Before that, I was teaching. So actually, after I quit my job to do this venture, um, I went straight to the Kenosha Public Museum and taught classes there. Mm -hmm. And then since then, I was running the clay studio at um, the Senior Center. Mm -hmm. So I think just doing art full time, um, I experienced a lot of burnout. You know, where it's like, oh, you have these events to prepare for. And as a creative, right, you're expected to be so creative. And sometimes, you know, you don't feel creative some Mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. So I think having the boundaries prevents burnout Mm -hmm. um, from what I've learned from my experience. And understanding, get rid of the FOMO. You don't go to one event. Your your business is not going to crumble. Like you are strong and stable and you need the energy to keep going. So yeah, yeah. be like, yeah, I don't need to do that market because I've already done two others or right? something. Right, and it's, so. you know, and in society and as a creative, like, they expect a lot oh, from yeah. you. You know, they mm-hmm. want it all. And it's hard to, yeah, just be like, no, don't want this. Yeah. Um, but I think we all could say no a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> That's on my 2023 to do list. Um, you know what? I'm not going to crack any more dumb jokes. Uh, I've got a toothache. So, uh, there you go. no. <laughs> no. And we respect your decision. Yes. Walking <laughs> away. <Yeah>. Door. <laughs> oh, geez, there Car starts. <laughs> wow. All righty. Well, I'm still here, folks. <laughs> You've got plenty more dumb jokes to come. And we'll get more into those dumb jokes when we come back from our little break. We are back from our break. Welcome back. Great break. Yes. Top 10 break. (laughs) Easily. A lot of fun here today. Yeah. Um, We're getting silly and having fun. So um, let's jump into the questions right away. Um, So Carly, what is your motivation to create? I know we kind of talked about it. (laughs) Yeah, I think like on a daily like situation, Mm -hmm. I think growth would be my motivation. Um, I I mean, I like to see, you know, what can I do next or how can I improve on these pieces? Or like I try to have more of a mindful practice when Mm -hmm. I sit down to work. You know, I do think like, oh, what went wrong on this piece? How can I improve it? Um, I am not trained i did not go to art school mm-hmm. um i'm the find <laughs> around and find out uh, gotcha. method is my favorite mm-hmm. method of learning Love um it. and i think like being self-taught you know that did make me a good teacher right because mm-hmm. i ran into like a lot of problems and i solved them myself so i think yeah growth um for my art and also for myself personally, I guess, is my motivation to create. Because, yeah, when you sit down and you kind of get into that state of mind, you know, if your mind wanders or if you can silence your mind, oh, gosh. Uh, magical things happen, right? <laughs> yes. um, so, yeah, I'd say I gr- growth is my Progress, motivation. moving forward. Yes. Yeah, to keep that forward momentum, um, I think, is important for me. 
And then, um, cause you kind of have different, um, not lines, but, um, uh, like you have your line of octopuses. I know it's not a line, but, uh, yeah. octopi, octopi, sorry. Is it? I don't know. I don't know. I'm asking. <laughs> it is octopi. Octopi. <laughs> cool. Um, but like you have a, your hearts series. That's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Series. Um, and then you have your octopi series, um, is there kind of um, when you – is there planning or anything that really goes into starting a series or do you experiment before you kind of fully commit to a series, if that makes sense? Um, I think there's a lot of uh, experimenting going okay. on in my <laughs> studio. Gotcha. <laughs> Not a lot of planning. Okay. Um, but, like, I try to do both of, like, sea life and, you know, forest life. I mean, those are two – things that are you know very important to me like people always ask the question like are you a beach person or a forest person and like I'm a world person yes. I am both yes. you know and like some yes. days I literally will go sit at the beach here and then I will go drive for a walk like in the forest so I think it's just balancing both of those those worlds and I think doing underwater pieces and like especially the piece where it's like water pitchers with the you know octopi on them mm -hmm. Um, I think when people think of water, it's kind of like an out of sight, out of mind, um, mm -hmm. mentality. Right. And then thinking of like environmental issues and like what's happening with our water, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and water security, like those are all very important things to me. So I think, yep, just like planting that little seed, like if someone sees that little octopus and it, it reminds them of the ocean or, or I need to take that trip to Hawaii, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> It's just a little thing that I could do to bring attention to this like greater thing. Awesome. Hey, there's something yeah. alive in there. Maybe right. I shouldn't like, don't put your throw my Gatorade <laughs> bottle into the lake. Right, right. <laughs> um, and then, is there a certain? Uh, do you have to be like in a certain feeling to create um, the artworks that are a little more art for art's sake versus the ones that you're really trying to communicate a message with? Is is there a different approach to those? Um, yes and no. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I would have said yes before I kind of learned to manage like the burnout. Oh, um, where it's like, you know, you have to be in this peaceful state of mind to be able to pull these ideas from you where mm -hmm. if you can incorporate, you know, daily practices of like finding peace or meditating or taking the time to fill your creative well. Mm -hmm. You know, if you build those things into your life, I found it just comes a little bit more naturally. Um, it's a little bit easier for me now, which um, for any artists out there listening, um, a book that was uh, life changing for me is a book um, called The Artist's Way. And they mm -hmm. kind of teach you these practices so you don't feel drained and go through these highs and lows of creating beautiful art and then creating you know stuff that you hate mm -hmm. um because i mean everyone goes through those moments but it's just finding the balance and being able to sit down and pull those ideas from you no matter what state of mind you're in um so i don't know if that really answers no, the no, question that does, <laughs> that does. um because you can kind of apply that i'm it's just like any other, not job, but um, you just don't want to be forced to do anything. So right. Right. waiting till the time is right to emphasize the ones that you're trying to commu uh, communicate a message with versus you're still creating, still doing with your art for art's sake um, right. pieces. So I like that. Having a balance between the two is um, the key, I'd say. So awesome. Yeah, and I think <laughs> yeah. creating pieces that do say something or provoke a certain emotion like that is my goal as an artist you know mm. but also like bills have to be paid so I have to have you know some sort of something in place that I can kind of not pump out but like mm. produce a bunch of things where you know if I'm feeling sick or if I have a toothache or a headache I can still sit down and like it's kind of like mindless work. Like I don't have to think too hard about it. So I think it is a balance between the two. Um, well, awesome. Very zen, very balanced. Yes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
My toothache is all gone. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> Look at you. We are in the Zen zone. <laughs> in the zen. Right. <laughs> all right. So next question. Oh, we're in the fun section here. Yeah, we're, so, we're having fun. <laughs> oh, I'm very curious to find out your answer to this. So oh boy. <laughs> if, if time and money are no object, what's your dream project? Giant octopus, <laughs> like, <laughs> like a mile wide. Oh, gosh. How would you <laughs> I mean, fire that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess I have like, I guess kind of two answers to this mm -hmm. question. Um, there's an artist named Daniel Popper. He does these larger than life installations. Like he just had a, a bunch of work at um, the Morton Arboretum. And they're just these large sculptures that, you know, you can walk into and it's wow. like this Whoa. full experience. I mean, that would just be, I mean, that is like my dream, right? Um, the other thing that I think I will accomplish, and I guess it doesn't take a lot of money, but it takes a lot of time, mm -hmm. um, is building my own Cobb house. Oh, my goodness. That is so cool. Cobb? Um, yes. Yeah. So a Cobb house is a mixture of clay and sand oh. and straw. Mm -hmm. um, it is an mm -hmm. ancient uh, building method. And this year, I actually went down to Alabama. Uh -huh. with some friends and um, worked on a cob house. And as a potter, I'm just like, wait, you're telling me I get to like play in this clay and then like grab handfuls of it and like stack it on top and make walls. Like it was a dream. <laughs> and the thing that is beautiful about cob houses is, you know, it's natural material. So you are like when you're in it, you were feet on the earth like connected surrounded mm -hmm. surrounded um but also because it's clay you can make it any shape mm -hmm. that you want um you can add sculptural elements to it um so to build my own house um out of cob would be my dream um and i actually do plan to go back in spring to do sculptural work on the cab house oh, that I, I helped out with. Gosh, um, that is so cool. It's actually a bathhouse, not a house house. But yeah, that is just, when I did that, it like sparked something deep, deep inside of me mm -hmm. that I haven't felt in a long time. And I was like, I need to follow this feeling, <laughs> you know? So it's it's been on my, on my mind almost every day and I, I don't know if you saw in the gallery upstairs they have little incense houses that look like little cob houses yes. and i'm like well i can't make like a life-size house so i'm gonna make this little mini cab house for now oh uh, i was gonna ask you what kind of your inspiration for those was because it was like a I, I could see it was like a, a slight divergence from the connection with the earth so much. I was going to ask you, like, right. why you, is, what's starting this little house thing? Yes. So, that, oh is, that is that. that. My dream that I think of every day is like, oh. and I know I will accomplish it someday. Mm. You will. Wow. Yes. I have so many questions. <laughs> this has been educate. It continues to be educate fake, by the way. Yeah. Um, how do you spell cob? Is it COB, COB? like corn cob? Mm -hmm. Where's that? Why is it called that? <laughs> oh man, I don't know. I thought it would be like an acronym or something, like mm -hmm. clay organs <laughs> and bricks. <laughs> and bricks. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, clay organs. And bricks. <laughs> but it's you said it's you said it's clay, sand, and straw, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So there really is a straw house, like the wolf and the three little pigs blew down the straw house. Yeah, but really they're quite strong and you probably oh. will not. Be so it's more like it the brick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. It's like all three of them had a little baby and made that house. You can't kick it down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they have some cab houses, I mean, hundreds, thousand years old. Wow. I mean, that are still standing today. Wow. Yeah, they're quite amazing. And I didn't think in Wisconsin it was possible with our winters and the snow and sure. When I went down to Alabama this year, you know, I learned that it is very possible. You just have to have like a proper roof, like any structure. Yeah, that's <laughs> how they get you. Yeah. <laughs> just need a good roof. Yeah. And it'll last forever. Yeah. Gosh, snow. <laughs> it's great. It snow's great. No, no. We talked about that during our break. I love snow. Uh, I'm weird. Either way. Either way. <laughs> um. So um, let's move on to the next question. 
if you're ready to move on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't want to interrupt your, your Cobb talking. <laughs> yeah. I could talk about Cobb all night. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go look it, it up when I go amazing. Home. Yeah, there's lots of YouTube videos on there. i got to so look, look up look Singing Water Bowl <laughs> and Cobb. Oh, right. <laughs> you, got, you guys have a to-do list. Go do it. <laughs> I thought it was just for corn. <laughs> Jake. <laughs> That was bad. Oh, no, I made her laugh. Now she's not going to be able no, to ask the question. No, that was bad. That was just a bad, <laughs> bad joke. All right, moving on. Um, unlike that joke, uh, what is the funniest <laughs> comment um, you've heard about your art? I guess I don't get a lot of funny comments about it, but I think one of the funniest things things that happened to me like at a market was actually at the Kenosha art market Mm -hmm. and I do a lot of female forms and usually they're nude Mm -hmm. um and I just remember you know from tents down I hear this little boy yell boobies (laughs) and everybody just like looks at me and I'm just like yep there's boobies over here (laughs) they've been here dude yeah (laughs) yeah right (laughs) but his mom he was like three and his mom actually bought him a little nude female form and i'm just like oh i love this progress oh my goodness (laughs) yes it was actually his first word he ever said (laughs) right right we haven't really talked about these sculptures but these are probably maybe one of the first things i ever saw from you are are these female form sculptures i guess you'd call them yeah and i I love them in in the the design of like that meant to look like wood Mm -hmm. right that's one of my favorite things Thank you. Yeah. And the, and the like little fun guy on there. Yeah. And I think that was um, just kind of an ode to like myself mm-hmm. as a woman um, and kind of not sexualizing a female's body as much, mm-hmm. but looking at it as art and yeah. creation. Um, and plus, I struggled with a lot of health issues um, in my adult years that are actually kind of behind me now. Um, But for a while, my body didn't feel like a safe place. Um, And then once I kind of healed and overcome a lot of those problems, here these female forms just started coming out Mm -hmm. of me. And I think it's because I kind of looked at it as home now Mm -hmm. instead of pain, you know. Oh, that's beautiful. That is so beautiful. Oh, Oh, my god! This is supposed to be the funny segment. I'm tearing up. (laughs) Powerful. That was very powerful. And... um, I, that's also I feel as a as a woman also viewing it, it is just the idea of how female bodies are viewed in this male gaze all the time. Yes, and this is a form of uh, disrupting that mm-hmm. and just connecting it back to the basics of nature and removing that um, male gaze. I think is very important and needs to be seen more so i right. i love when you do the little bust and everything yes and free the nipples right? yes <laughs> <laughs> yes um so yeah the the female nudes i think that really speaks and um the anatomical hearts i work back to yeah. gushing about yeah. that it's, work, but... it's gush section part four yeah. at this point <laughs> Guys. um i love how you found a way to also spin um messages with that as well through like um you wrote justice on some of them before mm-hmm. um with the veins and i i just love how you always have you do have your series but then you just find a way to make impactful work out of it as well and i that drives me nuts ah. because i i guess it's because i can't find that balance so i guess i'll have to do a little soul search into yeah like <laughs> the hearts too like um they were a part of my healing journey as well. You know, like living with chronic pain, having issues, um, and just to know that, you know, our bodies are amazing and they can heal just like the earth will heal itself Mm -hmm. and the earth Mm -hmm. takes care of us. Um, and I've gotten commissions for these heart sculptures and almost every person who commissioned me, it was a different story. Um, like I had a woman, she had like open heart surgery and Mm -hmm. she actually sent me like a picture of where she had the surgery and I placed the stitches like exactly where they were. And it just like moments like that is just reassuring me like this is where I'm supposed to be. This feels right. Um, I feel like it does kind of um, make a difference. Oh, awesome. I just, (laughs) I love that. Um, Shelly, it almost sounds like you like 
uh, Carly's work? Yeah, I think I do. <laughs> maybe a little. Might um, be a fan? Yeah, maybe. Hmm. I'm just... Not sure what gave me that idea. Just, I don't know. <laughs> kind of seemed like it. My God. It's like I can't stop talking about it. Um, so... <laughs> well, the perfect yeah. uh, opportunity. <laughs> yes. So. Yes. Oh, my um, goodness. Are we really on our last question? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. How did that happen? I time don't flies. know. It does fly by. But it is time for the last question. Dun, uh, dun, dun. Carly, what are some of your thoughts on the local art community? Ways to improve needs? What's What's good about it? Bad about it? Yeah. What do you want to see? Um, I mean, I think being in Kenosha um, has been great, um, especially as like a new budding artist. Mm -hmm. Having these new, like the art market that's pop popping up, yeah. um, they, it seems like the opportunities are growing. Mm -hmm. um, I do wish we had, you know, a few more galleries in town, which I think someday we will. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you guys doing this podcast <laughs> is um i feel like a big deal uh especially for artists because you know in the community like say working shows or working markets when you're vending you know you see these artists at every event but you don't get to sit down and and talk with them mm -hmm. because you're busy working and then at the end of it you're exhausted and you're like i want to go home mm -hmm. so like listening to this podcast like i've learned so much about these people that I share like this city with like it's been really cool and beautiful um, so I think Kenosha's doing great um, well that was the right answer you win by uh, <laughs> making us blush uh, no, I'm kidding. that's that's the real reason we asked that question oh no it is <laughs> no, not, <it's> not. <laughs> and, and I mean and being an artist when you're not teaching um it can be very isolating. True. Mm -hmm. You know, you're spending hours and hours and days and weeks alone in a studio mm -hmm. by yourself. So, like, it's really nice to just get to know these other people and having deep conversations. It's beautiful. And I think having the space and platform is new and exciting. Oh, yay. Yeah. No, I, I totally know what you mean. Because, like, I before the podcast like i i'm painfully shy and don't like to talk mm -hmm. to people so i'm perfect for a podcast <laughs> but uh no i would always wonder i'd like have these questions like you know uh, why why does carly make an octopus right. you know, that kind of thing and i would you can't just walk up to someone so what's up with the octopus well i guess you can Some right people do <laughs> well, I, mean, at, I mean events i think having open conversations like they're awesome like yeah. every artist wants to like do that maybe mm -hmm. not every but most but then again, it's hard because you're in this setting where like you're selling and if you're talking mm -hmm. to someone, someone's trying to buy something from right. you, like it's really hard to have those like deep conversations just like out in public mm -hmm. um, where like this is a much more yeah. fitting setting. This is yeah. the part where we have someone come in and try to <laughs> buy something from you and you got to figure out square or whatever. Right, right. <laughs> Oh, I only have a debit card. Uh, do you take Diners Club? <laughs> what about Cash App? <laughs> right, right. Gosh. So, yeah, and even at receptions, it's not like um, there's a lot of conversation and energy going on in the room and people approaching and you don't want to, like, favor someone right. by only talking to right. some people. And it's it's a mess. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's kind of another motivation for the podcast was just let's get to nitty gritty in a quiet room yeah. <laughs> and have some fun. But really we have the easiest job in the world yes. because there's just so many great artists here in the Kenosha area and Racine area and mm -hmm. between Milwaukee and Chicago. Yes. What was the term that I coined a couple episodes ago? Milwaukee? Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Yeah. Not Morocco. <laughs> not, not Morocco. Well, we should get some Moroccans on. <laughs> that sounds fun. Yes. Um, and uh, connecting back to the um, community stuff, I know um, being self-taught and everything, you yes. you use the community um, assets a lot more. So um, like Alpaca and the Clay Studio here. So mm -hmm. I know you really root for those spaces and um, more fostering uh, creative spaces like that. So Yeah, and I mean, in Alpaca, I mean, that was my full-time job mm -hmm. before I quit to do art full time. So I mean, I did always was in kind of this artistic setting, but mm -hmm. they really kind of set the stage um, for me doing the work that I do now, like, and working in these spaces and teaching and even running the kiln, learning mm -hmm. to do kiln work. Yeah. If I wouldn't have had those small business 
artistic communities to be a part of, like I wouldn't be where I am right now. Um, have we and... really never shouted out Alpaca Arts on the no, podcast? We wow, well, uh, well, shout out the first and ceramic. Shout out, we love them over there. He's our first ceramic. True, true, true. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. can we have another educate Jake? Sure. What's the difference between like ceramics and pottery? This is the dumbest question of all time. <laughs> it's okay. I, I mean, like, what do you guys think, Shelby? You can chime in on this too. For me personally, pottery is usually stuff that falls into the more um, functional works. Um, you can tie pottery in with ceramics, mm -hmm. um, but ceramics is the umbrella term, I think. Oh, yeah. okay. So for me, pottery is usually functional or um, using the techniques of functional potter of functional ceramics. Interesting. Um, Not what so I yeah. thought the answer. Yeah, would be. like I don't know if I would call like the heart sculptures I make mm -hmm. pottery. pottery. Right. I would maybe call them ceramics. That would be ceramics. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. Not yeah. what I thought at all. I thought they were like two totally different things. A lot of people okay. assume, yeah. I thought it would be like one uses plaster, the other uses clay, or something like that. Nope. But no, it's well to use a, the, the the weird analogy that came up in my head uh, was like I thought it was like karate and taekwondo. Are like they're totally different things <laughs> in the same idea, yeah. but really it's more like it's like karate and martial arts, yeah. right? Yeah, right. So okay, that's a good way to approach it. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So like um, the female bust with the um, the ones that Jake likes with the wood carving and the the fungi on that, mm -hmm. that's kind of like that in between area because it could be used as a vase, right? But it's also very sculptural, so. Okay. It, yeah. That's a gray area. It Potteramics. is lots of gray areas yes. in my work. <laughs> Where, whereas, like the octopus stuff, I I would be comfortable calling that pottery because right. it has more of a um, strict function. function. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it depends how you view it, but that's just how I view it. Very good. So. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> All righty. So, where can people find you? <laughs> Um, well, you can find my work here at Lemon Street Gallery. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, I will be at the brand new night market mm -hmm. at Public Brewery um, Saturday the 26th. Awesome. Um, Tomorrow. Of November. <laughs> if you're listening to this the day it came out. Yes. As you should. Yes. Tomorrow. Yeah, and it's um, from 2 to 8. Um, they do have a larger show um, of prints going on i believe it's called under pressure mm -hmm. um so you'll get to see lots of art um and i think there's 11 artists and i even though it's brand new i'm hoping it'll keep going um, oh yeah. so you can catch me there i'll have some function i'll have some pottery and <laughs> ceramics with oh. me oh uh, yeah <laughs> um yeah that's about it or i do have a website mm -hmm. i have an online shop um mm -hmm. it's earthlyconnection.co you can find some um, more functional pieces, um, pieces for ceremony, ritual. Um, mm. Yeah. I'm excited for those to yeah. come out. <laughs> yes. Social media. Yeah. Work, uh, Instagram. Um, I'm on Instagram, mm -hmm. um, earthly period connection. Um, gotcha. You know, I have a love-hate relationship with the uh, social media. But again, it's, yes. it's all about balance. Mm -hmm. um, but I've made so many beautiful connections with people through Instagram. So if you have questions or just want to chat, hit me up. Yeah, see, see your reels, see all the yeah. cool social media stuff. So I try. Be, I try. be an art stalker like me. Oh, she'll be number one art stalker. Oh, my God. I love I love just looking at people. I, I would wager yeah. that if you go back and listen to all of our episodes, Carly is the name that Shelby says the most. That's crazy. Like, That's at crazy. least a dozen times. Well, no, other people have said it too. For uh, true. Yeah. Local no, artists. Yeah. The name that comes up the most. Yes. I mean, and that just, that blows my mind because oh. I literally, you know, most days I'm just in my own little world mm -hmm. and I don't think anybody knows I exist. No. So it's really cool that like you guys even reached out to want to talk like i'm oh. truly honored um yeah mind-blowing yeah. <laughs> now the purpose of the podcast um get to hear what's going on in the community and know that hey i'm operating in my bubble but there's other yes. people that notice me <laughs> right so. and maybe you should pop nope, that it, bubble right you're supposed <laughs> to say it shelby it's your catchphrase you said it though <laughs> i don't want to steal your catchphrase <laughs> i have too many catchphrases but either way um 
so yeah love your work you thank already you. know um thank you. but yeah stop in to your favorite your favorite citrus themed art gallery <laughs> yes and you can see carly's stuff here she's got her cute little cob houses um the one that uh we've got a whole bunch of her work here so yeah definitely come in check it out and buy a piece because they're so dang cool <laughs> yes, definitely. You, yes we don't have to convince you to buy yeah. it we're gonna want to believe me. <laughs> yes you guys are sweet <laughs> and uh you can find us uh, wherever you get your podcast, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, our very own YouTube channel. Um, so we're not hard to find. And you can find us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, the Art Space Pod. Um, and shout out to our Facebook group, the Marvelous Makers and the Art Appreciators. If you ever want to know what's going on in the art community, just check in there. We usually post stuff um events going on um anything fun so yeah it's it, this has been a wild ride yeah. and i want to say thank you to everyone who's been listening because we are unfortunately ending season one mm -hmm. but we are excited to take a little break and get back to you guys re-energized after the holiday so yes we will be back season yes. two is coming Promising get, get January, excited. yes, yes. <laughs> Probably. Yes, we're hoping, we're hoping January, so. We're going to have a whole new slate of awesome artists <sighs> to, to tell you about yes. and have them tell you about themselves. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Something like that. Um, but yes, we really, really want to say thank you to everyone. Yes, thank you. Who's been a part of this. It's been amazing, all the artists, all the listeners, so thank you all so much. <laughs> and thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you. Carly. <laughs> All righty. Um, oh, and thank you to Would You Kindly for the music, of course, as always. Would You Kindly, our and, editor, Josh. Yeah, editor, Josh. And um, so, yeah, thank you, everyone. And I think that about wraps it up for this episode. And unfortunately, we won't maybe. Not, not next week probably but we'll, we'll see, see you on in the, the next, next one. one yeah we'll see you in season two baby yeah, 2023 <laughs> yes all righty bye bye depression addiction the thrill that you seek our restlessness cages the fire we need we're here to inspire